Hi guys, in this session, I'm going to deal induction machines crash. Okay, with this induction machine analysis, you will be able to solve all 100% of the old gate questions and at least 90% of the upcoming gate exam also you will be able to solve. Okay, and before uh, entering into induction machine, let me tell you one thing. Basically, machines is easy provided you have to understand the heart of the machine okay the crux of each and every machine will be there you should be able to understand that once you understand that remaining is a simple cakewalk okay for example in induction machine means the crux or heart of induction machine is rotor circuit analysis okay anyway i'm going to start from basics okay speed control starters uh, braking okay everything we are going to cover including harmonics also including harmonics also and i will try to complete it within one and a half hour maybe uh, some extension can be expected but within one and a half hour uh, i'm planning to complete this particular lecture with this lecture at least you will be able to solve 90 percent of the upcoming gate exam questions in induction machine okay and uh, let me start with basics okay basics first thing is in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque okay continuous electromagnetic torque is required either as a motor or a generator okay means for a motor also torque is required for a generator also torque is required because either generator or motor one side of the machine mechanical power should be there okay we know that motor will deliver mechanical power and generator will absorb mechanical power somehow mechanical power involvement should be there okay the moment mechanical power involvement should be there what is mechanical power torque multiplied by speed okay so in order to absorb mechanical power as a generator or in order to deliver mechanical power as a motor compulsorily torque is required okay now in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque in all rotating machines two conditions we have to meet at any cost okay those conditions are first condition number of poles of stator and number of poles of rotor should be same independent of any machine it can be induction machine or dc machine or synchronous machine this particular condition has to be met okay and one question can be expected here okay in induction machine and one more thing is uh, this particular lecture is not meant for directly btech studying students or who who are about to start induction machine for them this particular lesson will not help okay for gate aspirants who have already done a bit of induction at least overall view of induction definitely this particular lecture will help you okay kind of rotating magnetic field for example means how rotating magnetic field is going to be generated i'm not going to discuss here somehow rotating magnetic field will come into picture okay so because from there questions cannot come okay anyway number of poles of stator and number of poles of rotor should be same in any machine okay in induction machine we are having two types of rotors our main focus is rotor only okay two types of rotors will be there one is squirrel cage rotor and another one is phase wound rotor or slipping rotor phase wound rotor okay now remember one point that in squirrel cage rotor in squirrel cage rotor means squirrel cage rotor can be used for any number of stator poles for example one squirrel cage rotor can be used either for two pole stator or four pole stator or six pole stator because squirrel cage rotor automatically will produce any number of stator poles okay so this particular condition need not be checked for squirrel cage rotor but if you think of phase wound rotor okay so phase wound rotor intentionally you have to design your rotor in such a way that stator number of poles and rotor number of poles should be same okay because it has to be separately wounded and all forget about the remaining discussion because theory question only can come from here now beyond that one more point is there in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque first condition is this and second condition is means whatever may be the stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary with respect to each other mmf only okay it is not stator rotor okay so it is stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary to each other okay for example in induction machine if stator mmf is rotating with synchronous speed rotor mmf also should rotate with synchronous speed then only stator mmf and rotor mmf will be stationary to each other such that continuous electromagnetic torque will be produced okay so second condition is stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary with respect to each other okay stationary with respect to each other that's it okay that's enough that's more than enough now let me think of induction motor okay so in induction motor let me think of black is stator okay so here 
the moment you are going to supply to the stator because normally we don't use rotor fed uh, much in practice but in the exam they can ask okay so this is stator fed because we are feeding from the stator okay so we are st uh, feeding means some fixed frequency supply to the stator that is three phase supply okay to the stator so this can be called as stator fed okay so in your exam if they don't specifically mention meaning that it should be stator fed only okay if it is rotor fed specifically they will mention okay now let us think of stator fed now the moment you supply three phase supply forget about rotor for time being now the moment you supply three phase supply to the stator my mmf of the stator is going to rotate with synchronous plane okay so let me think of n uh, mmf pole structure n pole here Yes, pole here, yes, pole here, and these NS poles of stator is going to rotate with synchronous speed. Let me think of that synchronous speed as NS. Okay, that NS equation is going to be 120 F by P. Everyone know about this. Okay, now if I think of frequency as 50 H, number of poles as 2, number of poles as 2, 120 into 50 divided by 2 is going to be 3000 RPM. Okay, I'm taking this as a reference okay now stator mmf with respect to stator is going to rotate with ns speed okay for example for time being let us consider the ns speed as 3000 rpm now if you think of the rotor if you think of the rotor now my rotor because of some interaction electromagnetic interaction and all we are not going to focus there much because no questions can come from there okay now if you think of rotor this rotor will rotate in the same direction okay in the same direction of rotating magnetic field stator magnetic field for example if it is rotating in anti clockwise direction rotor also will rotate in the same direction but cannot be at ns synchronous speed it is going to be with nr nr that nr normally as a motor nr rotor speed normally as a motor will be less than ns ns okay now for example let me define slip here okay so slip is going to be stator mmf speed minus rotor speed divided by stator mmf speed okay so for example let me think of nrs 2700 okay and induction machine is called as asynchronous machine also it is not asynchronous it is asynchronous machine okay asynchronous machine in the sense a machine which cannot rotate by itself at synchronous speed okay now induction machine is asynchronous, asynchronous machine which cannot be rotated at synchronous speed by its own okay so always my rotor speed should be less than stator mmf speed that is called as slip and slip is very important thing here because in induction machine slip is the only one independent variable okay even if you uh, recollect from our classes it's fine otherwise forget about it may slip is going to be very important factor or only important factor in induction machine okay this is going to be the slip formula ns minus nr by ns okay now if i think of see here this is going to be stator is having fixed frequency supply fixed frequency because you are supplying with your power okay with your input power you are supplying electrical power to the stator so stator frequency cannot be changed okay meaning that stator frequency if you don't change stator mmf speed 120 f by p frequency cannot be changed so synchronous speed also cannot be changed okay now if you think of rotor if you think of rotor just remember one thing that in induction machine okay if you vary any torque requirement of the load okay because your induction motor you are going to connect this particular uh, motor shaft to the load okay if load requirement is high if load requirement is high my rotor speed will be reduced okay so if rotor speed is reduced ns minus nr for example torque requirement torque requirement of the rotor is reduced okay meaning that my rotor speed is going to be reduced okay if rotor speed is reduced slip is going to be increased okay so at the my motor shaft my motor shaft torque is going to be the only variable okay because my load will be there now for example a motor will be there this particular motor will be connected to load now that load requirement okay what is the load requirement torque only will be there so the moment load requirement of the torque vary automatically internally rotor speed is going to vary meaning that slip is going to be varying okay slip value will be decided by the load 
that's it okay now if i think of if it is rotating with stator mmf is rotating with 3000 rpm and rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm what is the relative velocity between them between stator mmf and rotor i repeat between stator mmf and rotor relative velocity is going to be 300 rpm okay now forget about the rotor for time being when stator mmf is rotating with 3000 rpm Stator developed frequency is 50H because I am supplying with 50H. Okay. So if I supply some voltage with 50H, my back EMF will be there. No, back induced voltage will be there. No, that back induced voltage also should be 50H. Okay. Now, when stator MMF is rotating with 3000 RPM, you are getting a frequency of induced voltages, back induced voltages or back EMF of 50H. Okay. Now, here if you see, when rotor is rotating with 2700 okay now the moment rotor is rotating with 2700 my rotor 2700 in this is my relative velocity is going to be 300 rpm for 3000 rpm of the stator if you if uh, produced frequency are 50 edge for 300 rpm how much will be the frequency of induced is going to be 5 head okay so my frequency of the rotor frequency of the rotor is going to be 5 head okay because if you are having 3000 rpm here frequency of induced voltage sir 50h if you have means uh, what they say rotating magnetic field which is rotating with respect to rotor because already rotor is rotating with 2700 okay so my frequency is going to be 5h now let us think of slip okay what is slip here slip is nothing but ns minus nr by ns Okay, this is going to be the slip formula, keep it aside. Now, let me think of rotor frequencies. Okay, so rotor frequencies, rotor frequencies, let me think of this as the speed of the rotor, speed of the rotor. Okay, for example, if rotor is constant, in the sense stationary, okay, when the rotor is stationary, when the rotor is stationary, means with respect to rotor, my stator MMF will rotate with 3000 RPM only. Okay, so for example, if rotor is stationary, meaning that it will behave like a stator, whatever may be the frequency of induced voltage in the stator, same frequency of induced voltages will be there in the rotor also. When rotor speed is 0 rpm, when rotor speed is 0 rpm, my frequency is going to be F1. Okay, stator uh, frequency only. Now, for example, if it is rotating with NS, when my rotor is rotating with synchronous speed, of course, by its own, it cannot rotate. But virtually, if you calculate, when rotor is rotating with synchronous speed, my frequency of induced voltage are going to be zero. Okay. Now, if you think of rotor frequency, is going to be SF. Okay. The moment frequencies are reduced, okay, the moment frequencies are reduced, what about the rotor reactance? Rotor reactance also will be reduced in the same way. So, let me think of rotor reactance. Rotor reactance is going to be S times X2. Okay. So, what is this X2? X2 is going to be rotor standstill reactance. Okay. Rotor standstill reactance because frequency is reduced, meaning that reactance also should be reduced. Okay. Now, if you think of induced voltage, okay, rotor induced voltage, rotor induced voltage also will vary in the similar terms okay so if you think of rotor induced voltage er and this is rotor speed as nr rotor speed as nr when rotor is not rotating okay stationary when rotor is not rotating 0 rpm 0 rpm what will be the relative velocity between stator mmf and rotor stator mmf is rotating with respect to stator by ns synchronous speed or 3000 rpm rotor is not rotating so relative velocity is going to be maximum or slip is going to be one when nr equal to 0 slip is going to be 1 okay so rotor induced voltage is going to be maximum here so this let me think of this as e2 okay if rotor is getting rotated at synchronous speed if rotor is rotating with synchronous speed then rotor induced voltage is going to be reduced so rotor induced voltage is going to be s times e2 Yes, times E2 because see here if you think of if rotor is rotating with NS, okay. So NS minus NS slip is going to be zero. So slip is going to be zero here. When rotor is not at all rotating, when rotor is not at all rotating under that condition, standstill conditions, so my NR is going to be zero. So NS by NS is going to be one. So slip vary will vary from zero to one. 
okay in this se2 what is meant by this e2 is going to be rotor stand still zero rpm rotor stand still induced voltage okay now rotor induced voltage is going to vary depending upon slip and rotor frequencies are going to vary with respect to slip and uh, rotor frequencies also are going to vary with respect to slip okay now this is the analysis now next thing is actually here also multiple times questions came okay now this is stator fed because we are trying to feed from the stator stator fed because we are trying to give supply three phase supply to stator okay rotor is going to be short circuited and all like much analysis i don't want to enter okay i don't want to entertain but anyway the moment it's stator fed here frequencies are going to be constant frequencies are going to be constant because we are supplying okay so the moment frequencies are constant what is ns is going to be 120 f by p okay the moment frequencies are constant number of poles normally will be constant because in speed control one time i will tell about pole change method pole change method but anyway as of now number of poles for any machine is going to be constant okay because number of poles for any machine should be decided at the time of design not in the time of operation okay so number of poles for any given machine is going to be constant and the frequency is constant if frequency of supply is constant automatically my speed of the mmf is also going to be constant at ns ns okay now if you think of here rotor okay if you think of rotor here my rotor is going to rotate with in this direction in the same direction okay in stator fed condition whatever may be the direction of stator rotation stator mmf rotation in the same direction my rotor also has to rotate okay so this is nr this is nr okay for example my stator mmf is rotating with 3000 rpm two pole machine 50 edge machine okay when my stator mmf is rotating with 3000 rpm if my rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm 2700 rpm under that conditions what is the rotor frequency is my frequency of rotor is going to be slip times frequency okay slip is going to be 10 percent and uh, my rotor frequency are going to be 5 h okay now the moment frequency of rotor is reduced reduce my direction sorry speed of rotation of rotor mmf also is going to change okay because see here stator mmf and rotor mmf you consider for stator mmf stator number of poles and rotor number of poles should be same so stator number of poles and rotor number of poles will be same okay now stator frequencies stator frequencies are constant at 50 h so stator speed stator mmf speed with respect to stator is going to be constant that is 3000 rpm now if you think of rotor okay rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm meaning that ns minus nr by ns is going to give you 10 percent okay 10 percent or 0.1 per unit now the moment uh, slip is 0.1 slip times frequency s times frequency is going to be 5 h for the rotor okay so the moment you are having 5 h only in the rotor under that condition means frequency is going to be sf okay because sf slip time frequency so it is going to be sf meaning that it is going to be sns okay so my rotor mmf with respect to rotor okay let me think of my rotor is already rotating 2700 and uh, my rotor mmf with respect to rotor okay yes in the sense it should be n it should be s fine okay so yes yes no 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 it should be n here it should be s here such that ns attraction sn attraction whatever it may be see here my rot see here always you have to focus here because once we understand stator fed properly means immediately rotor fed can be understood and after that once stator fed and rotor fed are over remaining is going to be simple cakewalk with just equations network theory that's it okay now see here my stator mmf with respect to stator is rotating with 3000 rpm my rotor my rotor physically is rotating with 2700 rpm my rotor mmf with respect to rotor is going to rotate with 300 rpm okay such that stator mmf and rotor mmf will have to become stationary then only you are going to get continuous electromagnetic torque okay let me repeat again focus focus
okay stator mmf with respect to stator is rotating with 3000 rpm okay let me tell you okay in this way for example one train is there which is moving in this direction maybe with 50 kmph kmph okay another train is moving adjacent to it okay adjacent to it with for example 48 kmph 48 kmph okay kind of stator mmf is rotating with 3000 rpm rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm okay rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm for example in this train inside this train if you run inside the train with 2 kmph with 2 kmph okay what will be the relative velocity between you and the other train is going to be zero okay in the similar way in the similar way if you see here okay stator mmf with respect to stator is rotating with 3000 rpm and rotor is rotating with 2700 rpm and with respect to rotor rotor mmf is going to rotate in the same direction with 300 rpm such that if you link the speed between stator mmf and rotor mmf stator mmf and rotor mmf is going to be 0 rpm or stator mmf and rotor mmf will become stationary to each other okay now what are the conclusions we have taken here stator is provided with fixed frequency supply that's why stator mmf will not change and rotor depending upon the load requirement depending upon the load requirement we know that stator speed stator speed all sorry rotor speed okay i'm sorry rotor speed always should be less than synchronous speed okay but how much less than synchronous speed that will be decided by the load that will be decided by the load okay now my rotor may rotate at 2900 rpm or my rotor may rotate at 2500 rpm or my rotor may rotate at 2700 rpm getting my point right so anyway see here one conclusion okay and one more thing is if you're unable to understand try to re-watch the video in future also okay because we are about to enter into many things in one class okay now see here my stator mmf with respect to stator with respect to stator is rotating in anti clockwise direction with 3000 rpm and rotor is rotating in anti clockwise direction only with 2700 rpm and with respect to rotor my rotor mmf is rotating in same direction with 300 rpm 300 rpm such that my stator mmf and rotor mmf will become stationary to each other that is the conclusion okay now they will ask you questions like this okay means uh, you have to focus here there because from stator fed only i'm going to get conclusions in the rotor fed also okay now conclusion here is relative velocity okay relative velocity between between stator mmf and rotor mmf should be zero okay so stator mmf and rotor mmf should be zero okay now next thing is relative velocity between between stator mmf and stator okay of course you know this i know but let me extend this let me extend this okay now point here is see here relative velocity between stator mmf and stator okay meaning that you are sitting on the stator see here stator mmf and stator okay so the physically existing device or uh, particular point is going to be stator okay stator mmf <coughs> just a minute stator and stator mmf okay stator and stator mmf will be decided by frequency you are supplying constant frequency because it is stator fed you are feeding through the stator okay so the moment you are feeding through the stator my stator mmf with respect to stator is going to be ns second speed because frequency is constant f it is going to be ns if frequency is sf it is going to be sns sns that is for the rotor okay now stator mm from the stator you are sitting on the stator okay is going to be ns is going to be ns okay and after that relative velocity relative velocity between uh, rotor mmf and rotor rotor mmf and rotor okay how much will be the relative velocity between rotor mmf and rotor rotor mmf and rotor meaning that you have to focus on the frequency okay how much will be the frequencies of induced voltage of rotor is going to be sf sf so how much will be the relative velocity between rotor and rotor mmf is going to be sns 
forget about it. Now, these three questions normally they don't ask. One time, of course, they have asked uh, velocity between stator MMF and rotor MMF in a sub question. In a sub question, okay. Now, let us think of directly they will not ask these three. Now they will ask, okay. See here, relative velocity. See, relative velocity, relative velocity between rotor MMF, rotor MMF and stator. Okay, relative velocity between rotor MMF and stator. Okay, so the moment they ask you any question, okay, you have to observe for the physical parameter. Okay, physically existing point. Okay, rotor MMF, MMF is going to be rotating. But what is the physical existing point here, stator? Are you sitting on the stator or rotor? You have to focus. Okay, so rotor MMF and stator because conclusion is very simple. Okay, we know that relative velocity between stator MMF and rotor MMF should be same. Okay, now the moment you are sitting on stator, stator and rotor MMF, don't try to visualize the things, it's not that much required. Okay, so stator and rotor MMF, why to take rotor MMF, you can take stator MMF now. Because stator MMF and rotor MMF will be stationary to each other. Okay, so just to confuse you, they will ask you this question saying like rotor MMF and stator. Okay, so the moment you decided to sit on stator, why to bother about <coughs> why to bother about rotor MMF or stator MMF? Anything is the same because stator MMF and rotor MMF will be rotating at the same speed, stationary to each other. Okay, so the moment they ask you, the moment they ask you stator and rotor MMF in place of rotor MMF. Think of stator MMF only. Stator and stator MMF. Stator and stator MMF is going to be NS. Okay. So, is going to be NS. Now, they can ask one more question. Okay. Because all these things we are going to extend to rotor fed. Okay. Now, they may ask you relative velocity between stator MMF and rotor. Stator MMF and rotor okay now what is the physically existing point here basically before uh, answering any type of questions first of all we have to understand where we are going to sit on the machine okay so visualize here stator mmf and rotor in between relative velocity between stator mmf and rotor where are you going to sit here on the rotor okay so the moment you decided to sit on the rotor why to bother about whether it is stator mmf or rotor mmf because in the space Okay, in the air gap, stator MMF and rotor MMF will be stationary to each other, stationary to each other. So, the moment they ask you, okay, so the moment they ask you means stator MMF and rotor MMF. Rotor is the physically existing point. Rather than stator MMF, you can replace rotor MMF. Rotor MMF, okay, because stator MMF and rotor MMF will be stationary to each other. So, rotor, physically existing thing, so rotor MMF. Rotor MMF and rotor. What is the rotor operating frequency? Yes, F. <coughs> okay, slip times frequency. The moment you are having, <coughs> the moment you are having slip times frequency, it is going to be slip times N S. You understand my point, <coughs> right? Now, next thing here is only one more point you have to understand. Okay, so that is that is see here when the stator mmf is rotating in anti-clockwise direction rotor also will rotate in anti-clockwise direction only try to keep in mind okay so direction apart from this direction matters okay so when stator mmf is rotating in anti-clockwise direction rotor also will rotate in anti-clockwise direction only for example if you want to change the direction of rotation of rmf of stator okay if you think of see here black Okay, if you think of this as phase A, phase B, phase C, okay, and if you supply currents, if you supply currents of A, B, C, A, B, C, first A maximum will come, after that B maximum will come, and after that C maximum will come, three phase currents. So, first A maximum will come, after that B maximum will come, after that C maximum will come, means my stator MMF will be rotating in anti clockwise direction such that rotor also will rotate in anti clockwise direction. Okay, now if I think of changing the direction of rotation of rotor, what I'm supposed to do rather than ABC phase sequence, if I give ACB phase sequence, ACB phase sequence, then what's going to happen? First A maximum will come, 
A maximum will come. And after that, B C maximum. A, C, B phase sequence. First A maximum will come. After that, C maximum will come. After that, B maximum will come. So, automatically, direction of rotation of RMF of stator is going to be clockwise direction such that rotor will be rotated in clockwise direction. Okay. So, point to be remembered is very simple. In order to change the direction of rotation of RMF, just to change the phase sequence, everything fall in place. This is the thing. This is <coughs> rotor fed. Okay, this is rotor fed. Why it is rotor fed? Because you are supplying, you are supplying your uh, what do you say input power, electrical power through rotor, through rotor. Okay, electrical power at a constant frequency, at a constant frequency. So basically, power we don't give. It will take automatically at a given voltages and at a given frequencies we are going to supply. Okay, so the moment you supplied, you supplied your power input here, okay, through power, uh, electrical power input, then frequencies of the source are going to be constant. Okay, so the moment of frequencies are constant, frequencies are constant, automatically my rotor frequency, because same supply will go through slip rings. Okay, so here, the moment here it is frequency is F, my frequencies of rotor is going to be F. Okay, now if you think of stator fed, Okay, if you think of stator fed, in stator fed, stator is F, rotor is SF, rotor frequencies. And if you think of here, okay, in rotor fed, my rotor frequencies are constant at F because supply frequencies are going to be constant. So, what about my stator frequencies? It should be SF. It should be SF. Okay, I'm not entering into too much into the analysis, not required. Okay, that doesn't mean that I don't know. Okay, anyway, point here is very simple. Okay, St uh, my rotor frequencies are going to be constant. So, stator frequencies will be decided by the load that is nothing but slip. Okay, now, for example, my rotor. Okay, my rotor, the moment I supply some constant frequencies here, with respect to rotor, my rotor MMF has to rotate by NS. Because frequency is constant and that particular NS is going to be 120 F by P. Okay, so <coughs> my rotor MMF with respect to rotor is rotating with NS. With respect to rotor, my rotor MMF is rotating in anti clockwise direction. Okay, now without going too much into analysis, simple. Okay, on floor, on floor, if I walk like this, I'll move forward. I'll move forward. For example, if I do the same, if I do the same on treadmill, on treadmill, I will be constant. I will be stationary, but uh, means what do you say? That particular belt will go backward. Okay. So point here is simple. Means if I'm moving forward in this direction, okay, same movement is same. Movement is same. I'll go forward. I'll go forward. But if I am stationary, but still if I'm I'm able to walk, meaning that kind of treadmill. Okay. So that particular belt will go back enough enough okay so by the same strategy by the same thing not too much into analysis okay so if it is rotating in this direction my rotor my rotor is supposed to rotate in opposite direction opposite direction just keep it in mind in that way okay so my rotor my rotor mmf is rotating in this direction meaning that my rotor has to rotate in opposite direction with less than synchronous speed with less than synchronous speed okay now what about the stator frequencies my stator frequencies are going to be s yes into f s yes into f okay meaning that <clears throat> if i think of here okay so two poles are created if i think of here my stator poles okay because number of poles of stator and rotor should be same okay the moment frequencies of stator now Okay, because we supplied power through the rotor, so stator frequencies are SF. So my stator poles has to rotate with the speed of SNS. SNS. Okay, in which direction? In which direction? Ultimately, we know that stator MMF and rotor MMF should be stationary with respect to each other. Okay, now <coughs> my rotor MMF with respect to rotor. Okay, so my rotor MMF with constant frequency, right? My rotor MMF with respect to rotor is rotating in anti clockwise direction with 3000 rpm. With 3000 rpm. Okay, now my rotor is rotating in clockwise direction, in clockwise direction with 2700 rpm. Okay, now if you sit in the space, okay, so if you sit in the space, air gap, 
okay uh, basically i am not uh, what do you say discussing much into the analysis part okay if i am sitting in the space my rotor mmf with respect to rotor is rotating in this direction with 3000 and rotor is rotating in this direction with uh, 2700 2700 so if you see okay my rotor mmf in space in space has to rotate in this direction with 300 rpm with 300 rpm okay let me check here my stator rotor mmf with respect to rotor is rotating in this direction with 300 3000 rpm 3000 rpm and you are sitting here now my rotor mmf is rotating in this direction with 3000 rpm my rotor is rotating in opposite direction with uh, 2700 rpm 2700 rpm so my stator mmf such that stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary with respect to each other has to rotate in this direction with 300 rpm or sns or sns okay such that see here my rotor mmf rotor mmf will rotate will rotate against to the direction of rotor against to the direction of rotor and my stator mmf also will rotate against to the direction of rotor against to the direction of rotor then only my <coughs> stator mmf and rotor mmf will be stationary to each other will be stationary to each other getting my point right even if you don't understand much don't try to analyze much okay very simple means when rotor frequencies are f stator frequencies are going to be sf okay my rotor frequencies are f my rotor mmf with respect to rotor is going to be sns sorry uh, ns okay and stator frequencies are sf stator frequencies are sf so stator mmf is going to be sns the same thing whatever we have done in stator fed now let us see relative velocities now you will understand you will understand or at least you will try to remember the things okay now see here relative velocity between stator mmf and rotor mmf stator mmf and rotor mmf okay both mmf should be stationary or not yes yes so it should be zero rpm it should be zero rpm okay now let us think of relative velocity between between stator mmf and stator okay stator mmf and stator only and stator only so in stator see here in rotor fed induction motor i'm thinking the moment in rotor frequencies are f stator frequencies are going to be yes times f yes times f so my uh, stator mmf and stator is going to be sns because ultimately my rotation speed of rotation of mmf is going to be 120 f by p p cannot be changed 120 f directly proportional to f okay if frequency is sf my speed of rotation is going to be sns that's it okay now let us think of relative velocity relative velocity between okay rotor mmf and rotor rotor mmf and rotor rotor mmf and rotor only okay rotor mmf and rotor only how much it should be how much it should be rotor means which what are the frequency operating frequencies of rotor operating frequencies of rotor is going to be f here okay meaning that with respect to rotor my rotor mmf has to rotate with ns synchronous speed is going to be ns okay now let us play with it let us play with it and here we have to uh, remember one thing that with respect to direction of rmf rotor will rotate against to the direction of rmf against to the direction of rmf okay or stator mmf or rotor mmf will rotate against to the direction of rotor okay anything is fine now let us think of relative velocity between between rotor mmf and stator rotor mmf you need not bother much just where you are going to sit matters okay in the complete machine means in the physically physically where you are going to sit on the machine you have to understand see here stator and rotor mmf stator and rotor mmf okay and which part of the machine you are going to sit stator okay you are going to sit on the part of machine which is stator the moment you are sitting on the stator you are sitting on the stator why to bother about rotor mmf because stator mmf and rotor mmf will be stationary to each other okay so rather than taking rotor mmf rather than taking rotor mmf let us think of stator mmf 
स्टेटर एमएमएफ नाउ स्टेटर एंड स्टेटर एमएमएफ स्टेटर एंड स्टेटर एमएमएफ स्टेटर एंड स्टेटर एमएमएफ मीनिंग दैट व्हाट इज ऑपरेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ स्टेटर इन रोटर फेड इंडक्शन मोटर एसएफ सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी एसएनएस गेटिंग माय पॉइंट राइट नाउ लेट अस थिंक ऑफ रिलेटिव वेलोसिटी बिटवीन स्टेटर एमएमएफ स्टेटर एमएमएफ एंड रोटर Stator MMF and rotor. How much it will be? Okay. See here, stator MMF and rotor. Which part of the machine you are going to set? Stator MMF and rotor. Okay. So either you can sit in the stator or you can sit in the rotor or you can sit in the space. Okay. If you are sitting in the air gap, meaning that you are sitting on the stator only. Okay. Now, in between stator MMF and rotor, you are going to sit on the rotor. Okay. So the moment you are sitting on the rotor. Why to bother about stator MMF? Think of rotor MMF only because rotor MMF and stator MMF are stationary to each other. So stator MMF is not required. Let us think of rotor MMF. Okay. So rotor and rotor MMF, meaning that what is the operating frequency of rotor? We are supplying to rotor now. No. So operating frequency of rotor is going to be F only, supply frequency only. So it is going to be Ns. Okay. So in this way, in this way, we have to understand. Okay, and as per that, definitely in rotor fed or shatter fed, multiple times they asked the questions. Okay, as per that, we have to conclude this way.